Hey everyone, what's up? My name is Nick, and in today's video, we are going to add a widget to our slide out cart to hopefully upsell our customers adding more products to the cart. What does this look like in practice? Well, you'll see if I have a slide out cart enabled and I add to cart. It pops out, it shows us our cart, but then it also adds this widget here. It adds this nice carousel that we can scroll through and it dynamically adds to cart and updates appropriately. So this is gonna use some HTML, some JavaScript and CSS, um, and you're gonna be able to add it as a theme block. So if you look over here, I have added it to my header right here. Um, and then uh, you'll be able to save it and have it work just like this. So the technologies we're looking at, we're going to be using the product recommendations API, and we're also going to use the section rendering API. Now this is on the DOM theme, of course, but I've added some code where hopefully, depending on your theme, it shouldn't be too hard to get to work because a lot of themes utilize um, custom JavaScript events. events. Um, but if it follows a structure more similar to Dawn, you should be covered as well. Um, and if this is something that you really want to add to your store, but you're not technical savvy, I will be adding this to the App Store. I'll be having an app uh, release soon. So just follow up with me at the time of this recording, and uh, hopefully by then um, it will be out in public. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my duplicate theme that I have uh, ready to work in, and I'm actually going to create a new file. So this is going to be in the sections. And it is going to be called, oh, excuse me, not section. It's going to be a snippet. We're going to reference it from our uh, sections. And I'm going to call it cart upsell. And you can call it whatever you'd like as long as you use the uh, right naming conventions later on. And then I'm going to copy and paste um, some HTML in here. And all this code is available in the link to my GitHub below. So you should be able to have, find all of this there. Um, I'm going to try pasting because there's a lot of code in this. I'm going to paste it and hopefully walk through it so that you can understand a little bit. Uh, what's going on. But right here, this is actually the carousel container. So um, if I go back to the preview here, so this is the kind of container here and the buttons and then this dynamic content because we have, you know, it's going to depend what is in our cart, what actually shows up for the product recommendations. And that is going to be inserted dynamically via JavaScript right here. So this is just our um, kind of our bone structure so far. And now what I'm going to do is go into that GitHub code and I'm going to copy and paste a, a bunch of JavaScript. Okay, so I pasted this in in the script tags. So this can just go right below the HTML. And there's a lot going on. So um, let's get into it. The first thing I'm going to actually go to is where the um, everything is initialized. So we have this event listener for when the DOM is fully loaded and we can start manipulating. Uh, and I call two functions. I call this on cart update and I call this cart subscription. So the cart subscription, because it's right here, this is where we are gonna be able to listen for cart changes. So if I'm on the cart page and somebody adds a product or they increase the quantity or something, I want to be aware because I need to dynamically uh, generate the cart so it's always up to date with the latest information. So that's what this is doing. And this is utilizing the Dawn um, structure where we have these pub sub events, which are pretty cool. If you're interested, I would recommend digging into those a little bit more. Um, but you'll see right here below, I have commented out something for uh, JavaScript event <clears throat> listeners. So this is a common practice I see in a lot of themes where they might uh, emit an event like cart updated, or sometimes it's like cart uh, hyphen updated or something like that. So you'll have to look at your theme and see what, um, what it actually uses. But because this is Dawn, uh, we're going to use these uh, pub sub events. And then the other one, other function we're going to look at is uh, the on cart update. So this function right here. So uh, you'll see right above it, we're actually checking if uh, using some liquid code to see if it is the cart page. Because if it is the cart page, we have two carts um, to show, if that makes sense. What I mean by that is we have this Ajax cart. But if I actually utilize this cart page, um, you'll see we also have it here. So there's this cart and then there's the dynamic slide cart. So um, we're checking for that. And then we're calling this function here. And this is actually where we use the section rendering API. And the reason we do that is because we're getting all the dynamic values we need so that we can update them, like the total down here, as well as like the uh, little 
number count up here in the corner. So we're using the section rendering API to fetch those. And then what we do is um, we dynamically update those in the DOM. So after we do all that, we then call this initialize cart upsell function. So what exactly does this function do? Well, um, we pass it the cart. And then what we do is we actually hit the product recommendations API, which I definitely would recommend reading up in the uh, Shopify documentation. And what you do is you just pass the product ID and then it gives you a list of um, similar products that you could, that it would basically recommend for you. So um, once we get those, we do a couple of things. So we do some DOM stuff here where I'm listening for these uh, buttons to be clicked so we know when to move the carousel. And then we also are doing some filtering here. So uh, we want to create these uh, product cards. So this is just creating the HTML right here. This is all this is and adding the right um, variant and product information so that when we add it to cart, it will be correct. So once we get that, we also want to filter and make, sh make sure that um, we're not including any products that are already in the cart. And then we're also um, making sure that the variants are available because we don't want to have a product in there that's out of stock or something like that. All right, and then after we do that, we have some DOM manipulation here going. So we're cloning our HTML and then we are going to inject it so that that uh, code right here will always be up to date. So you can see we have, um, I'm basically creating clones for the HTML because like I said, there's the drawer slide out and then there's also the dedicated cart page. So this is just handling like event listeners and knowing when to click for which carousel we're talking about. Um, and then we have like the logic to actually move the carousel. And then we have one other important function I wanted to talk about, which was the add to cart, handle add to cart right here. So this is uh, what's being called obviously when we click the add to cart button and it's going to just do the Ajax add call. Um, and then it's going to call to update the cart accordingly because remember we always want the widget to be up to date with whatever the cart currently is. Um, so that's a lot of JavaScript here and also I left this comment out as well because this um, for the DOM theme it's easier to maintain it in this regard but if it is a different theme that doesn't um, work with the pub sub and whatnot this uh, code right here you can uh, uncomment and rather than using the section rendering API to rebuild the cart, you can sometimes just emit uh, this custom, like a custom built cart build or um, something similar. So you just want to see again what your theme is using um, so that you can make sure you update the cart appropriately so it's always in sync. All right, so we have this all uh, squared away. We are missing one more thing and that's our CSS. So let me just copy and paste this. And you can paste this wherever. I'm going to paste it at the bottom. I probably would recommend putting this in its own file, but you might want to leave it in here um, and then have add some like customizable features. So uh, you can add the change the background color or change the you know the size of the button and the color of the button and things like that, the text, etc. But this is just a proof of concept to get you guys started. Again, if you want all the bells and whistles, um, just reach out to me because, like I said, this will be included in my app that will be released soon. Um, so just let me know if you are looking for that. But after the styles are in there, which I won't really talk about, the main thing I wanted to just mention is that this container is initially set to display none because we want it to hide and only show if we actually return products, right? If there's no, if the API crashes or something like that, we don't want to display any text at all unless there's actually data there. So then via JavaScript, we actually make it um, the visibility uh, available. Okay, so after I save this file, I am going to um, add it to my header. So if I open up my header liquid section, I can scroll down to the bottom here and right below this, uh, in the schema, right below settings, there should be block. And currently there exists a block for our apps, but I'm going to add one for our block that we just created. So put whatever, whoops, whatever you um, named that file. And then we also need to give it a name. Awesome. And then we need to change one more thing here in this file. Because remember, this schema will make the block appear on the customizer, but it's not actually going to render anything 
unless we add it to the liquid. So what I'm gonna do is go up to some liquid code, probably just at the bottom and right before, yeah, probably like right here. And then I'm gonna add, oh, actually, uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find where we're rendering those blocks because we have an app block in here already. So it should be getting looped through and added. Uh, right here. So this is what we're looking for, the for loop where we go through the blocks and we render them, right? So this one handles if it's an app block. And then what we wanna do is do almost the same thing, um, except we're looking for our cart upsell. And then what we're gonna do is rend uh, do include, Perfect. And if I save that, okay, excellent. Now I'm gonna check out the customizer and we should be able to see it. Um, if I click into the header, add block, there it is right there. So I'm gonna click it. We don't see anything yet because um, it's, it's, we're not gonna see it till it's actually in action. But if I hit save, and one thing I wanna point out is sometimes themes are not like Dawn, um, the header section is actually connected to this header group JSON section so that we can add um, dynamic blocks to it. But if your theme doesn't, you're going to have to migrate your header into a uh, JSON, uh, be referenced in a JSON section. I can add a video to do that if you'd like, uh, because it can be a little bit confusing. But um, just know if for some reason you're not able to see it, um, here you're not you're clicking on like adding a block and you just don't see it anywhere that's probably why so again if you would like me to make a video on that i'd be happy to do that okay so after i've saved and uh, make sure i'm previewing the right theme here okay and i already have something in my cart whoops oh th i'm glad this happened so when i clicked on the cart it took me to the cart page and it does look like it's working as expected here right if i add this to cart it should work excellent um but you'll notice the uh, Ajax cart slide out didn't, um, didn't appear. And the reason is because I need to enable that. So if you're in the DOM theme, if I come to theme settings, and if I scroll down to the bottom here and click on cart, I'm gonna click drawer instead of the pop-up notification. So now that I've done that, if I hit save, if I add something, I need to refresh. If I add something, okay, cool. So now we see our cart slide out. We have our carousel right here and it looks like it's working. So I can add, it should update, awesome. And if I delete, it's always updating correctly because we're using that section rendering API. And um, yeah, we have a fully functional um, in-cart upsell so that we can hopefully increase our order values. And this is just pure theme code. This is just JavaScript, um, liquid, HTML, CSS, all that stuff. So again, I'm gonna create an app if you just wanna use my app and not have to touch the code. But uh, let me know if you have any questions or anything, um, anything doesn't make sense. And uh, thank you for following along. I hope this has been helpful. And stay tuned for more Shopify related content like this. And I'll see you next time.